Now, this month marks two years since the death of 10-year-old Sophie Farrell. She died from an aggressive form of childhood cancer. Her local Gospels MP, Dame Caroline Dynage, is calling for the government to publish a childhood cancer action plan and working with Sophie's mother, who has created the charity Sophie's Legacy in her memory. Well, joining us now to share more on the dangers of childhood cancer is local gospel MP Dame Caroline Dynage and Sophie's mother, Charlotte Farrell. Good morning to you both. Thank you so much for joining us. And Charlotte, let's start with you, shall we? We've just seen some beautiful pictures and videos of your daughter, Sophie. Tell us a bit more about her. Yeah, she was a very healthy, happy nine-year-old who enjoyed going to school who um, she was just so bubbly and happy and positive and enjoyed life and they hadn't spent one night in hospital prior to becoming unwell. And when did you know that, that she was unwell with childhood cancer? She started become, complaining of stomach pains. She felt sick. She was struggling to eat in the mornings particularly. And we obviously had gone to the doctors, but they put it down to other things. But the moment she started bleeding was the moment I knew that something more was serious. But she was told that it would be her first, it was her first period, even though I was insistent that this was definitely not her first period. And in the end, I took her up to A&E. And that's when they said, how long she had this lump for? And I said, what lump? And they found a 12 centimetre tumour in her abdomen. Oh. And, and Charlotte, um, the, the loss of a child is something that no parent uh, would ever, ever wish for. But so inspiring that you've used this to launch Sophie's Legacy. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, Sophie made me promise her before she died to achieve her wishes. She wrote a bucket list of things she wanted to, to um, be achieved. Things like parents to be fed in hospital, to improve play facilities seven days a week and to improve children's cancers so that they have a chance at surviving and also that there's an improvement to things like training healthcare workers to actually pick up the signs of childhood cancer quicker because we all know that being diagnosed quicker with cancer you've got a better chance at survival yet children with cancer seem to be diagnosed often misdiagnosed a number of times before they actually are. What an incredible character your daughter is, that she was dying from childhood cancer and she used that time to think about her legacy and to think about you and to think about other parents and other patients and try and make their cancer journey a little bit better than hers. Yeah, she, she just was incredible. I know that a lot of parents say that about their children, but she, the mindset to have, knowing that she was dying, and only just turned 10 when she just, you know, when she died. But she just wanted to make a difference. And she even said to me, you know, I obviously was in tears and she kept looking to me, said, it will be OK, Mum. And I just don't know how she did that. She wanted to make a difference. She wanted things to be changed. And she made me promise her that we would achieve this. And that's why we have continued our campaign. I met our MP 10 days after Sophie died. And we haven't stopped since. And Caroline, that's a, an excellent point to bring you in. Uh, what a wonderful way of representing one of your constituents. Can you tell us about um, how you're using your parliamentary influence to try and get this issue on the table? Yeah, I mean, I can quite understand why uh, Charlotte said that Sophie was a remarkable young lady. She was, but actually Charlotte and the rest of her family are quite remarkable as well, how they've turned this unspeakable tragedy into such an effective campaign to try and save the lives of, of other children. So as you've just heard, Charlotte came to see me just 10 days after Sophie died and had a very clear idea as to what needed to change to try and meaningfully impact the way that we detect the way we treat, the way we care for children and young people with cancer across the UK. And ever since then, we've been on a mission, the pair of us, like a dynamic duo. Uh, we've yeah. met with every single health secretary. We've I've raised it in prime minister's questions with every single prime minister. And as you know, there's been a bit, bit of a revolving door in both of those roles over the last year. Um, we've had a lot of positive response from the Department of Health. We've met with so many experts, Charlotte and I. So we've put together a very clear action plan. We call it a childhood cancer mission 
mission that it will meaningfully change the way we do everything from uh, alerting people to the signs and symptoms, improving the way that we research this. Childhood cancer is such a backwater when it comes to uh, research and investment and also meaningfully improving the way that children are cared for and the way they experience their treatment when they're in hospital. Mm. It's so moving. Um, Charlotte, I just want to ask you, what do you think Sophie would say to you about all of this? I think I'm hoping that she'll be pleased with what we're doing. Um, I know that she would be right behind us, wanting us to, to just not give up and keep going. And however hard it gets on days, because obviously we're living with our own grief during this time as well, which is, you know, it's challenging and but she would not want us to give up and would want us to keep fighting for you know for change we keep getting told that childhood cancer is rare but one in 450 children be diagnosed by the age of 15 that to me is not rare and there should be more awareness around the signs and symptoms there should be more treatment there's only been four new cancer drugs approved for children in the last 20 years that to me is just not good enough for children. We should be investing far more into children's cancer than there currently is. Look, Charlotte, Sophie, your daughter just seemed like the most incredible little girl. She was very, very lucky to have you as a mother as well. And I'm sure you feel as though you were very lucky to have her as, as a daughter as well. So thank you so much for coming on the programme and, and speaking about her. I'm sure many people watching will feel very, very moved by that interview. And Caroline Dynage as well, really good to have you with us this morning. And best of luck to you with that action plan. Really hope that can uh, go through to the government for you and you can get that passed. Uh, best of luck to both of you and thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I... <laughs> Oh, Martin. <laughs> it's an absolutely beautiful little girl, Sophie, mm. and um, really emotional just hearing from her mother there speaking about Sophie. And I I'm struck by how a 10-year-old can be that mature and that incredible, really, to, to use her, her dying days to think about other, other children and her own family as well. Yeah. It is very, very moving. I'm sure everybody out there, you know, will be like me now, thinking about your own kids. And my neighbour's um, son has got cancer. He's dying. And, um, oh. yeah. Yeah, so it's very close... Yeah. This issue to you, Martin. But it's amazing that something positive is coming out of this. And, and it's so good to see a Member of Parliament um, listening to a constituent and doing really yes. positive things in a way that can, can leave a legacy not just for, for Sophie, but for, for all other children affected. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. A constituent MP doing things for their constituents. It's actually a really lovely thing to it see, is. isn't it, on such yeah. an important issue.